Now, personally, I would think, and maybe, again, that's part of the problem, I would think, which seems to be a big stretch for a lot of people involved with professional wrestling, thinking, or more like the lack of thinking, that next week, Wednesday is Christmas Day, there's not going to be an AEW Dynamite episode. So, your next show's two weeks away. You would think, since your next show is two weeks away, you would want to give the people something that would entice them. You would give people something that felt like a bit of a cliffhanger. A something like, oh, I want to see what they do next in two weeks and actually build up anticipation and a little bit of excitement. Especially knowing that your next show, when it does happen in two weeks, is going to be on Wednesday, January 1st, New Year's Day, a holiday. And as we all know, holidays traditionally produce poorly rated, low-watched shows, particularly with wrestling. Therefore, no show for two weeks, and when you do come back, it's a holiday episode, you would think, right? You would think, or, or maybe, let me rephrase that, I would think that you would want to do more than offer up this steaming pile of grade A freaking indie hall crap that AEW produced this week. This show was bad. Very few redeeming qualities to it whatsoever. Some of the same production and presentation issues they've had, they continue to have, they don't learn, and it's just not helping. What a surprise! Guys that aren't used to putting together weekly television have no idea how to put together weekly television! This show was bad! Really, really bad! And beyond all of that, not just bad, but really, really boring and nonsensical and illogical, which is even worse. You can have bad train wreck, and bad train wreck sometimes can be a lot of fun and really, really good entertainment value. But this was none of that. From the opening tag match, it's the Lucha Brothers against Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. Why? Not setting it up or anything. Not promoting it for weeks. Not doing anything to tease up anything. Just pow! Bob's your uncle right in your face immediately diving right into a match. Does anybody even remember the match? No, of course not. What, afterwards? Hangman Page and Kenny Omega look like they're about to get into it. Why? What's the big deal here? Then there's Pac talking about he wants his rubber match with Kenny Omega and sits there and is threatening to beat up his friend. So here comes Kenny Omega running back and then the both of them, instead of focusing on this thing, we're focusing on this thing just so that way they can get attacked by the Lucha Brothers again. This is WWE crap. It's nonsensical. It's pointless. It wastes time. I don't want to watch a non-WWE product to watch WWE like crap! Crap! Not to mention throughout the whole night. Here are people talking. So we'll do the split screen commercials so we can't hear what the hell's going on. Oh, Sammy Guevara is doing something. I wonder what he's doing. Nobody knows and nobody cares because, again, they're doing the split screen so you can't really see it and you can't freaking hear it. It's just trash. Then you come to this freaking Cody Rhodes Darby Allen tag match against the Butcher and the Blade, and Cody and Darby win. What was the whole point of having him get attacked a couple of weeks ago just for him to get his revenge already? You could ask some even more appropriate question of what the hell was even the point of having these randomly unfrickin' known guys attack Cody Rhodes and putting them in this spot. Valid question, even if you want to say from a kayfabe standpoint, well, MJF was behind it, well, who cares? A couple of weeks later, the issue's resolved. Who gives a crap? Like, this was your first 30, 40 minutes of the damn show. 
Here comes Awesome Kong to squash a jobber. You know what? Based off of the fact that you have all of these way too damn long matches that all have the same type of style, I appreciate a shorter type of squash match. But again, they're wasting time with Kong doing this crap all because it involves freaking Cody's wife. And I do not give a crap how good she looks, how pretty she is, or how good she might be in bed, Cody. This storyline must stop, and it must stop now! She is not bringing anything of value. She is not bringing anything that is piquing interest in your product. All it does is show that if you sleep with one of the bosses, you can get on Tatter House. I mean, you would think for somebody that's been in wrestling for several years, she would learn how to better enunciate, better deliver her promos, and she can't do any of that crap. And she's not even looking as good as what she once did. But what's the value that she's bringing here? And then Dr. Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander. So we're never going to leave the dentist thing alone, even though it doesn't provide any value whatsoever. And then apparently the Statlander took an alien. Why? Well, the fuck out of here! Afterwards! Is she going to join? Is she not going to join? She's winning... She won the match. She gets a shot at Riho, the absent champion. Like, oh my god. The phony witch is trying to recruit the phony freaking alien to join her nightmare collective or whatever the hell they're called. Again, I watch non-WWE. Excuse me. Let me try this again. Non-WWE stuff to watch non-WWE things. I do need, not need to watch a non-WWE show to watch an even crappier version of WWE things. Good Christ almighty, this was bad. God awful, horrible. The one thing that really had any redeeming qualities at all this week was the match between Jericho and and Jungle Boy, or Jungle Jack Perry, as Jim Ross seems determined to call him. And you know what? I don't disagree. I'm kind of determined to call him that, too. His dad was freaking Luke Perry. He's doing from that to an owl. I can't try to distance yourself, but damn it, if you've got something you can potentially leverage, and your family's name being it, use it! Nonetheless, this was easily the best part of the show. Why? Because I actually bothered to try and tell Jungle Boy's story. Showing video clips of him. Having a sit-down interview with him. But even in that case, you're still wondering why this guy that really hasn't won any freaking matches in the company is getting a shot at the freaking world champion for 10 minutes. And furthermore, why the hell this match is happening halfway through the show? Especially what happened in the damn main event. They should have main evented. They can't get anything freaking right. They got the wrong people in the wrong places and the wrong spots on the car. It's horrible. The match itself is good, except for the fact that I'm supposed to sit there and believe that a guy like Jungle Jack, who can't fucking beat anybody, is going to withstand the walls of Jericho from your world champion for over a minute. Why in the hell would I take that guy's finisher seriously ever again? And even though you had the Luchasaurus out there, and you had Jake Hager out there, it was a brief moment, and they both get sent to the freaking back! So even within the good, there was still a lot of doo 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 dee crap! Nothing could compare to that main event. The Young Bucks and SCU for the Tag Team Championships. Could you imagine for so many of you a match featuring the Bucks of Suck and SCU generating so little interest from any of you? This is forgettable. The only thing memorable about it is the way it ended because of how bad it was. And that's the freaking Dark Order from their stupid amateurist third-rate indie wrestling look to the phantom stiff blows 
that aren't connecting anywhere to a point that it gives Shane McMahon an erection. This, this is the big cliffhanger. This, this is what your delusionally idiotic minds within AEW think is going to sit there and captivate people enough, leave them at the edge of their seats and probably never get another one anymore, that they're going to be destined and have no choice but to sit there and tune in two weeks from now on their New Year's Day holiday. Give me a break. No wonder the viewership numbers suck this week because this show sucked this week. And who's the wise ass that sits there and says to themselves, you know, this MJF guy is pretty over with our crowd. He generates really good heat. So let's not have him appear on the show at all. Then we got John Moxley, probably the next guy to take on a world champion, one of the most known names in our company. Let's not have him on the show at all! The Luchasaurus, who's definitely monstrous in his appeal within the audience and actually one of those few guys that can cross over from the indie hardcore nerds to the mainstream fans, let's barely feature him and throw him as an ad in the fucking Jungle Jacks match and get him kicked out a little bit of the way through it! Writing and producing good wrestling should not be this hard. But time and time and time again, these people involved with professional wrestling show how incapable they are at it and how incompetent they are with it. Too much of any one thing is just bad. You've got so many matches that all feel the same, look the same, get worked the same, and nobody cares. You might think it's cool to pop your diminishing live crowd, but note the key word there, diminishing. The moves only go so far, brothers and sisters. At some point in time, you've got to have characters that people are going to care about, and they won't care about them that much when they all do the same flips and kicks and high spots and no-selling and false finishes for the roll-up three. They're not going to care if you don't have stories that get people invested. Like, I didn't even realize we had really closed the door on the elite and inner circle stuff, and all of a sudden now we're sending the freaking Dark Order at the Bucks. And we're making a big deal about two no-name jobbers. Like, who the hell are these two guys legitimately? Who the hell are they? Joining the freaking faction. It'd be something if it was a big deal. But instead, they choose two jobbers. Who the hell are they? Why the hell would I care that they're putting on the mask in order to join the faction? Like, who books this crap? Sean Spears and Tully Blanche are talking about looking for something. How about looking for a damn victory? Don't be looking for anyone else. Look for somebody to beat. You introduced a new heel group a couple of weeks ago who's beating up your alleged top face, in reality, your top freaking heel. And now you just have that top baby face go over on. When you think about that January 1st episode, I can't wait to see over the next two weeks on Twitter, Cody and other people within the company talking about, look at these two women in this match that nobody knows about, nobody cares about. That's going to be awesome. This match between these two people that actually has no business or purpose occurring this is what we're going to focus on and announce on social media. And that's how you're supposed to build up the matches nowadays. This was bad. At least the viewership numbers reflect how bad it was. And if you're an NXT nerd, don't be sitting there and getting off your jollies either because you idiots couldn't even get 800,000 viewers. Oh, we bumped up a little bit. Oh, who gives a crap? Oh, my God. Meltzer McGoo. Well, I'm not. Well, um, uh, well uh, uh, you're going up against the impeachment. Uh, give me a freaking break! Is it always going to be an excuse with these assholes? The show sucked. It's not the end of the world. But if you continue to deny the problems that are going on, it will continue to suck. And then it will eventually be the end of this damn company.